This sound file contains the spoken version of a Wikipedia article on John Fraser, botanist, recorded by user SC Tuckwell. The material recorded is current as of the 21st of December, 2012. John Fraser, botanist from Wikipedia, the Free Encyclopedia, at en.wikipedia.org. Contents. The article contains ten major sections, with some subsections. They are Section 1, Family and Early Life Section 1.1, Family Section 1.2, Early Life Section 2, Starting Out Section 3, Travels Section 3.1, Appalachia and the Alleghenies Section 3.1.1, Charleston Nursery Section 3.2 Russia and Shipwreck Section 3.3 Cuba Section 3.4 Business Difficulties Section 3.5 Later Voyages Section 3.5.1 Death Section 3.5.2 Legacy Section 3.6 Family Tree Section 4. Species named for Fraser. Section 5. Publications. Section 6. Letters and Portraits. Section 7. Botanical Name Notes. Section 7.1. Fraser's North American Species List. Section 8. See also. Section 9. References. Section 10. Further reading. The article provides an information box containing material of interest to the reader, including the following information not repeated elsewhere in the article. At the beginning is an image. The image has the caption, John Fraser, lithograph of an 18th century portrait. Known for Discovery and Introduction of the Flora of the Americas to Europe John Fraser, Botanist John Fraser, FLS, FRHS, 14 October 1750 to 26 April 1811, was a Scottish botanist who collected plant specimens around the world, from North America and the West Indies to Russia and points between, with his primary career activity from 1780 to 1810. Fraser was a commissioned plant collector for Catherine, Tsar of Russia, in 1795, Paul I of Russia, in 1798, and for the Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna in 1806. He issued nursery catalogues circa 1790 and 1796, and had an important herbarium that was eventually sold to the Linnaean Society. Section 1. Family and Early Life Section 1.1. Family Fraser was born during the Age of Enlightenment at Tomnacross, the Aird, Invernessure, on 14 October 1750. His father was Donald Fraser, a.k.a. Donald Down, a patronymic description of hair color traditional amongst the Scots Highlanders. His mother was Mary MacLean, and his siblings included a brother James, born 16 March 1753, and sister Christiana, born 5 December 1756. Fraser's eldest son, John Jr., circa 1779 to 1852, continued in his father's footsteps as a plant hunter after Fraser's death and became a respected nurseryman in his own right, ALS, 1848. John Jr. also owned the Hermitage Nursery at Ramsgate from 1817 to 1835, and when he retired he sold his nursery to William Curtis in 1835. John Jr. met with the celebrated American botanist Asa Gray, in 1839, early on in Gray's career, and ultimately sold the Fraser Herbarium to the Linnaean Society in 1849.
Fraser's youngest son, James Thomas, directed the family nursery at Chelsea with his older brother until 1811 and then on his own until 1827. Fraser's grandson, John, became a member of the Royal Horticultural Society, attending meetings in 1877. Section 1.2 Early Life in 1770, five years before the American Revolutionary War, and coincident with Captain James Cook's discovery of the eastern Australian coast, Fraser arrived in London as a young man to make his way in the city, at first following the trade of a hosier, a draper working with linen. Early on, he acquainted himself with the Chelsea Physic Garden, and it was through his visits to that establishment that he became inspired with the desire to advance horticulture in England. He married Frances Shaw on 21 June 1778 and settled down in a small shop in Paradise Bow, Chelsea. Section 2. Starting Out Not long content with life in London, Fraser soon began to quit the mercantile counter as often as he could in order to watch the proceedings of the gardeners close by. He befriended William Forsyth, who at that time had charge of the apothecary's garden. Through that acquaintance, he would have become familiar with his predecessor Mark Catesby's travels, as some of Catesby's specimens from his travels were housed at the Chelsea Physic Garden, and Catesby's writings and engravings on the floor of the Americas were also published by the time Fraser moved to London. This section is accompanied by an image with the caption, Campbell's Ship. HMS Victory. Fraser took up botanical collecting and, two years after the United States of America had named itself, departed England for Newfoundland in 1780 with Admiral Campbell. Upon returning to England, he sailed again in 1783 to explore the New World with his eldest son, John Jr. Fraser's early expeditions were financed by William Ayton of Kew Gardens, William Forsyth and James Edward Smith of the Linnaean Society. In the 1780s, Fraser established the American nursery at Sloan Square, King's Road, which his sons continued after his death in partnership from 1811 to 1817. The nursery was on the east side of the Royal Military School and extended over 12 acres. Section 3. Travels. This section is accompanied by an image with the caption, United States of North America, William Faden, 1793. As the 18th century came to a close, botanists who hunted plants afar were adventurers and explorers, John Fraser among them, fielding shipwrecks, sieges, slavery, pirates, escaped convicts, and hostile natives. Fraser traveled extensively from Scotland to England, the Americas, the West Indies, Russia, and points between. He began by collecting in Newfoundland from 1780 to 1783 or 4, and then moved on to the Appalachian Mountains in eastern North America, all without the benefit of railroads or well-established highways. By the time he completed his journeys, John Fraser had introduced about 220 distinct species of plants from the Americas to Europe and beyond. Section 3.1 Appalachia and the Alleghenies on his first trip south a few years before South Carolina became the official 13th colony of the United States, Fraser journeyed to Charleston in 1783 or 1784, sending home consignments of plants to a Frank Thorburn of Old Brompton. Returning to England in 1785 with the expectation of recompense for his labor and risk, he was astonished to learn that all the valuable plants he had forwarded were dead and the survivors, which were common, could not be disposed of. Vexed, Fraser subsequently entered into a lawsuit over the matter, a suit long and very expensive to both parties, but sailed again for South Carolina in the autumn, nonetheless. On his return trip that autumn, he made his way north through Berkeley County to the Santee River, befriending Thomas Walter along the way. He continued on to the Piedmont region of the Appalachians, discovering Phlox solonifera, creeping flocks, in Georgia along the southeastern edge of the southern Blue Ridge, and in 1787 arrived in Pickens County near Cherokee Land during the Chickamauga Wars. There he collected what became known later as Magnolia frizzari. Fraser gave his contemporary 
william barton his original specimen of magnolia frisere the specimen is housed in the walter herbarium in the british museum of natural history collection the hortus cuensis recorded sixteen new plants as having been introduced by fraser in seventeen eighty six and five more in seventeen eighty seven Fraser trekked the Allegheny Mountains in 1789 when trans-Allegheny travel was limited to indigenous people's trails and one military trail, Braddock Road, built in 1751 and too far north of his journeys to be of help. He traveled with François-André Michaud and on the summit of the Great Rhone was the first European to discover the rhododendron Cotabiense, and now cultivated in many varieties. Of the rhododendrons he wrote, Quote, we supplied ourselves with living plants which were transmitted to england all of which grew and were sold for five guineas each Unquote. section three point one point one charleston nursery this section is accompanied by an image with the caption rhododendron catabiense john's brother james was actively involved with the american side of fraser's plant export import business and from at least seventeen ninety one they jointly leased some land in charleston until may eighteen hundred in seventeen ninety six the brothers additionally mortgaged four hundred six acres on john's island along the marshy edges of stono river originally a part of the fenwick hall estate the brothers had difficulties with their land deals, though, and in 1798 they fell behind in their payment obligations to the extent that their creditors instituted litigation to collect past due sums. Despite their problems with lawsuits, leases, mortgages, and land too marshy to be perfectly suited to their enterprise, in 1810, the year prior to Fraser's death, large numbers of rhododendrons, magnolias, and other native plants were still being shipped from the Fraser Brothers' Charleston Nursery by their agents there section three point two russia and shipwreck in seventeen ninety five fraser made a first visit to st petersburg where he sold a choice collection of plants to the empress catherine to his delight she requested he set his own price while there he bought black and white tartarian cherries in seventeen ninety six thereafter introducing them for the first time to england in 1797, Tsar Paul I ordered that Fraser be paid 4,000 rubles for his plants that year, and by the next spring, Fraser had received 500 pounds sterling for his efforts. In 1798, Fraser traveled again to Russia, returning afterward with the commission Botanical Collector to the Emperor Paul, under the signature of each Paul and Catherine, and dated Pavlovsko, August 1798. Based on his trust in the Imperial Commission and in furtherance of carrying out the duties it imposed upon him, Fraser and his eldest son John started out once more in 1799, bound for America and the West Indies. They visited with Thomas Jefferson at Monticello and made an extended journey through Kentucky, eastern Tennessee, and northern Georgia, returning to Charleston in December 1800. From there, they set out for Cuba but the sailing was a perilous one, since between Havana and the United States they were shipwrecked on a coral reef about 40 miles, 64 kilometers, from land and 80 miles, 130 kilometers, from Havana, escaping only with great difficulty. Quote, For six days they, with sixteen of the crew, endured the greatest privations until picked up by a Spanish boat and conveyed to land. Unquote. The trip was nearly disastrous, and the men barely escaped with their lives. Section 3.3 .3, Cuba While collecting specimens in Cuba, quote, a time when the sea was swarming with pirates, end quote, Fraser met Alexander von Humboldt and Aimé Bonplan on their circuitous journey from the Amazon to Cartagena. John's son returned to England first, transporting a large botanical collection of Humboldt's after he had kindly intervened on their behalf during their sojourn to keep them safe. Fraser returned from Cuba to America and then to England in 1801-1802, quote, with a goodly collection of rarities, unquote, one of which was his discovery as a European of Jertofa pandurifolia. 
In 1807, both father and son again sailed for North America and the West Indies. On his next trip to London, after collecting in Matanzas, Fraser brought home a tropical palm with silvered leaves, Corifa Miraguama, and made a manufacturing proposal for hand weaving of hats and bonnets from its leaves. Fraser's sister Christiana, Christy Fraser, opened an establishment for the purpose under the Queen's patronage. The Queen herself was an amateur botanist, and employed a number of people, but the scheme ultimately failed, possibly through scarcity of material. This section is accompanied by an image with the caption, Abies Frazieri, Fraser Fur, named for John Fraser. Fraser Fur is native to the southeastern Appalachian Mountains. Section 3.4 Business Difficulties When Fraser made his next visit to the Romanov court in 1805, expecting remuneration, to his great disappointment he discovered that the new emperor would have nothing to do with him. Undaunted, he repeated the trip, visiting both Moscow and St. Petersburg, but in vain. After the Emperor Paul I's assassination in March 1801, the new emperor, Alexander I, declined to recognize Fraser's appointment. Fraser petitioned his cause for two years, finally resorting to seeking assistance from the British Ambassadorial Corps, and was ultimately paid 6,000 rubles by royal decree in April 1803. The Dowager Empress Maria Fyodorovna, an enthusiastic amateur botanist herself, supported his efforts, giving him a diamond ring and commissioning him for specimens for the imperial gardens of Gatchina and Bavlovsk Palace. The director of the imperial botanic garden at St. Petersburg catalogued 18 of Fraser's North American species in the early years of the 19th century, with some of the specimens surviving, as of 1997, in the Komarov Botanical Institute of the Russian Academy of Sciences. After the Romanov affair, Fraser faced severe financial difficulty, though again he sailed to America. While successful in his researches there, his nursery at home fell into neglect through his absence and money problems. His financial situation may have affected his relationship with his brother James, since in 1809 Fraser sued his brother, as former business partner, in the Charleston Court of Common Pleas for debt exceeding a thousand forty two pounds. Section 3.5. Later Voyages Fraser made his seventh and last voyage to the United States in 1807. Near Charleston, he fell from his horse and broke several of his ribs, an injury from which he never fully recovered. His final voyage, before returning to England, was from America to Cuba in 1810 for a last visit to a country that had welcomed him despite the nationalistic differences of the day, and from which he had a richly rewarding collecting history. Section 3.5.1 Death Although he was known to his contemporaries as, quote, John Fraser, the indefatigable, unquote, owing to his business and travel vexations and possibly also to exhaustion from his injuries after his fall and his frequent and fatiguing journeys, his life was shortened. Though a robust man, he died in April 1811 in London, Sloan Square, at only sixty, leaving two sons. His wife died a few years afterwards. He did live long enough to see one grandchild, William, born to John Jr. and his wife Sarah, on 30 June 1808, and more offspring came later from both his sons. Fraser's financial difficulties must have been a heavy burden to his family even after he died, since two years afterward he was declared to have been bankrupt at his death. Fraser did take care of his family, though, as the terms of his will gave his unmarried sister Christy a place in his home and financial aid from his sons. In 1818, Christy was still receiving her support as specified by that will. Section 3.5.2 Legacy Throughout his travels, Fraser sent his collections to his nursery in London for reproduction and general sale to gardeners and architects coming to London to look for plants to his herbarium, later becoming that of the Linnaean Society, for further study, and to his clients, including Catherine the Great, the Emperor Paul I, the Dowager Empress Maria Fedorovna, the Chelsea Physic Garden, William Mayton, head gardener of Kew Gardens, Sir James Edward Smith, founder of the Linnaean Society, and others. William Roscoe wrote of him, 
quote, John Fraser brought more plants into this kingdom, Britain, than any other person. End quote. Though the intrepid John Fraser died young, his sons carried on their father's work. John Jr. returned to America, where he continued his own botanic excursions until 1817, before returning to England and founding his own nursery. John Fraser was hailed early on by his biographers as, quote, one of the most enterprising, indefatigable, and persevering men that ever embarked in the cause of botany and natural science, end quote. Section 3.6. Family Tree. This section contains a brief pictorial representation of John Fraser's family tree covering four generations from John Fraser's parents to his grandchildren. The individuals on the list will not be read. Section 4. Species Named for Fraser. Species named after Fraser include, among others, Abies Fraseri, Fraser fir, Magnolia Fraseri, Fraser magnolia, and the gentian warts, Frasera. A 50 foot Fraser fir was used in 1998 as the U.S. Capitol Christmas tree. The species was also used in 1974. This section is accompanied by an image with the caption Magnolia Fraseri named for John Fraser. Section 5. Publications. This section of the article lists John Fraser's publications. They will not be individually read. Section 6. Letters and Portraits. John Fraser's letters are maintained at the Royal Society of Arts, and one of his portraits hung at the Hunt Library. Both Hopner and Rayburn painted his portrait. Fraser was an elected fellow of both the Linnaean Society of London, FLS, 1810, and the Royal Horticultural Society, denoted by his use of FRHS. Section 7. Botanical Name Notes. The standard author abbreviation, Fraser, is used to indicate this individual as the author when citing a botanical name. John Fraser's son, John Jr., nay, John Fraser, circa 1779-1852, takes the author abbreviation Fraser F. in citations. Section 7.1. Fraser's North American Species List. This section of the article lists over 200 North American plants discovered and introduced by John Fraser between 1785 and 1799, and by John Fraser, Jr. from 1799 to 1817. The individual plant names will not be read. Section 8. See also. This section lists other Wikipedia pages related to John Fraser that may be of interest to the reader. There are eight items listed. Item 1. History of Botany. 2. List of Gardner Botanist Explorers of the Enlightenment. 3. Scottish Enlightenment. 4. The Plant List. 5. International Plant Names Index. 6. Botanical Name. 7. History of Plant Systematics. 8. History of Taxonomy. Section 9. References. There are 30 detailed references with annotations available in the written form of this article. Please be sure to verify information found on Wikipedia using the references provided or by cross-referencing the information yourself. Section 10. Further reading. There are 14 additional books and external articles in the further reading section for finding additional information. These will not be read. Additionally, there is a link to Wikisource which has original text related to this article. We now come to the end of the spoken article, John Fraser, Botanist. This sound file and all text in the article are licensed under the Creative Commons Attribution Sharealike 3.0 Unported License, available at creativecommons.org.